Folks, in 2 Samuel chapter 7, one of the great chapters in the Bible, we have the Lord establishing a covenant with the house of David. And as we read verses 1 through 17, kind of sets, uh, sets this uh, forth for us. Um, David had it in his heart to build the Lord a house. We talked about that yesterday. And so uh, the Lord speaks to the prophet Nathan, who had encouraged David, said, you go do what's in your heart. But then the Lord spoke to uh, Nathan and said, go tell my servant David, verse 5, shall you build me a house uh, for me to dwell in? And uh, then he talks about that a little bit. And uh, then he says in verse 8, now therefore shalt thou say unto my servant David. Now, so the Lord's giving a message to Nathan, take it to David. Uh, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, from fo following the sheep to be ruler over my people, over Israel. And I just stop there for a minute and just think about that. You know, David was a young boy. Uh, he had a heart for God in his youth, obviously. And you know, the Lord chose David and uh, he said, I took you from the sheep coach. You were a shepherd looking after a flock of sheep. And I took you from that setting and I made you a uh, ruler over my people, over Israel. Um, you know, we owe everything to the Lord, uh, whether it's David, where he had a particular uh, role to play in history and God chose him for a very significant thing. Uh, you know, whether it's us and God chooses us for different tasks in the mind of the Lord, what he's chosen for us is as significant as what he chose for David. Mm -hmm. You know, it's on our end where we minimize things. Oh, you know, if I could be a king, boy, that'd be something special. Yeah, but how about being the best husband you can be? Uh, that's that's uh, very special. Uh, see, we, we, we only look at, you know, we, we get a, we get infected with the spirit of the world too quick. You know, the spirit of the world is basically climb the mountain, be king of the mountain. And if you're not that, you're basically not much of anything. To be mm -hmm. honest, you know, win the Super Bowl or, you know, your world's over. Mm -hmm. Well, not really. Far from it. Whatever God has called you, he's brought you from a certain place. You know, he saved us. He brought us. And um, you're special to the Lord. Uh, David was special to the Lord. He brought him from this place to be ruler over Israel. And uh, the Lord says, I was with thee, verse 9, wherever you went, and uh, have cut off thine enemies out of thy sight. The Lord did that for David. Of course, David had to engage the battles, didn't he? He was a man of war, but God preserved him. And then uh, he said, I've made thee a great name. Uh, you know, quite frankly, the nations of the, around Israel back in David's day, they thought, you know, we're not going to mess with him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he, he doesn't seem to lose. <laughs> yeah. uh, and so like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth, you know. Uh, but now verse 10, isn't this interesting? Now the Lord's speaking and then he kind of broadens the subject from just David to his, to his people. And verse 10, he says, Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people, Israel, and will plant them, that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time. Um, <clears throat> so this is far reaching. And the Davidic covenant that God establishes with the house of David, it's far reaching. It touches our lives because our Savior is the greater son of David who is destined for the throne of his father, David. And in fact, one day the church, the bride of Christ will rule and reign with the savior. We'll be at his side as it were, and we will rule and reign with him. It's, it's phenomenal. But God is revealing this back in the day uh, to David. And he's saying, I chose you and I'm gonna make a covenant with you. And ultimately this has to do with the whole nation. You know, I just wanna get a word in quickly here. Um, we, uh, we bless the Jews and we bless Israel. We bless the seed of Abraham, naturally speaking. We know God has a plan and a program for them and we respect that. Uh, we know God has a, a, a prophetic program for Israel. He hasn't forsook Israel, although she's in a condition of blindness and disobedience even to this moment 
on a national level, right? But the day is coming when all Israel will be saved. The day is coming when this verse is going to be fulfilled. Verse 10, I will appoint a place for my people Israel and the children of wickedness, they're going to afflict them no more. Now, that hasn't been fulfilled yet, Neil, because all we got to do is look at the Mideast and we, we know that's not yet fulfilled. Yeah, I mean, they're afflicted right now uh, as far as yeah. constant barrage of attacks from a number of nations, not just, you know, we think of that Gaza area and there's always seems oh, yeah. some, some kind of conflict there, but there's many other nations around them that uh, love to destroy them. Well, uh, verse 12 goes on. The Lord speaks to David. He says, when thy days be fulfilled, Thou shalt sleep with thy fathers. I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. Of course, prophetically, that was speaking of Solomon. He shall build a house for my name. So there's the Lord's message to David. You're not going to build this house, but your son, when you've uh, left the scene, he's going to build the house, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. And I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. Folks, with these words, God established a dynasty in Israel. The house of David was to rule over Israel. Mm -hmm. And this is very significant to this very day because, uh, as I mentioned a moment ago, uh, our Savior is promised the throne of his father, David, see? And so uh, every Christmas, Neil, it won't be long, it'll be Christmas, we'll talk, uh, revisit those uh, historical passages and the announcement. Uh, you know, the first announcement about, I think it was to the shepherds, was not, uh, I, uh, or maybe it was to Mary, I, I will give unto him the throne of his father, David. Mm -hmm. Well, this is what God established. This cannot change. Neil, thy throne shall be established forever. Mm -hmm. I mean, forever. It can't be changed. Now, there's a lot of circumstances that have changed in history as far as ebbs and flows and Israel receiving discipline and so forth and so on. But God's covenant with the house of David has never been annulled. It mm -hmm. can't be because the throne ultimately belongs to King Jesus. Right. Yeah, that's I mean, when he talks about it being established forever, uh, we know that Israel wasn't even had didn't even have a national identity for a while, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but in Christ, it is still established and his covenant hasn't stopped. Amen. And some of what he's talking about here, like you said earlier, has yet to happen. Uh, so he's saying, I'm going to establish this covenant and it'll be with your seed. And there are some things in the distant future at his second coming Amen. where he's going to make good on those promises. Yeah, that's a good way to say it. The Lord will make good on his promises. <laughs> None of them fall to the ground, do right. they? Right. Yeah, well, nothing. Um, you know... This is a significant uh, historical uh, covenant, just like the Abrahamic covenant. Uh, it will never be annulled. God has a, a covenant with Abraham. He has a covenant with David. Uh, God always keeps his covenants. He never breaks them. And um, our time is up for today, but just think about the, the implications for us as believers. God has made a new covenant with us. And he sealed it with the blood of his own precious son. Praise his holy name. <laughs> he will never alter the thing that's went out of his lips. And he'll never change that covenant. Well, we've enjoyed being here today. It's such a blessing. I pray you'll be encouraged in the Lord. God bless you. Until the next time.